Okay, Paul Salmon here. Going to do a series of videos that uh, are meant to get you by the oral component of your helicopter check ride. These are going to be specific for the R44. The R44 is what most people do their check ride in. Probably 90% or greater helicopter students in the United States end up doing a check ride in an R44, 10% something else. And we're going to concentrate on the Robinson R44 for the purpose of this uh, discussion. First thing you need to know is that if you don't pass your oral component of the check ride, you don't get to do the flight portion. So it's very important that you be well versed in the material that you're going to be testing on over the oral uh, component. And this is something that's very important to know. This is not, you know, you're not studying playing golf or basket weaving or whatever. This is information that you really need to know. Uh, it can be uh, the difference between uh, know been a successful pilot and not so this is something that you really need to concentrate on and be well versed in okay so the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to find uh, what's called the practical test standards practical test standards are published by the FAA it's in written form and it it uh, basically lists exactly what you're going to be tested on uh, during your check ride so what you want to do is the first thing you want to do is do a search for the FAA and you'll come to uh, a page that looks like this. Click on the FAA, and it'll bring you to their uh, home page. And all the way over here to the right side where it says training and testing, click on that. Come down here to right here where it says review airman practical test standards. Click on that. Brings you to this page that says practical test standards across the top. You're gonna scroll down we'll just use the private pilot one. Uh, interestingly enough, the difference between the private pilot and the commercial pilot test standards are, they're almost exactly the same. And so where they're slightly different, I'll, I'll add the, uh, uh, some comments as to what you need to pay attention to on the commercial check ride. So, so you just click on this, uh, and then it'll take you right to the private pilot practical test standards. Now, like every other government publication, you'll notice it has 107 pages and it's horribly redundant and filled with a lot of information that you don't need so what you're going to want to do is scroll to page 40 which is about right here and there's page 40 that's where it's going to start and you want to print out a copy of this you want to print page 40 to page 66 all right and I'll show you what that looks like so it's going to look at here's page 40 Page 66 is going to be all the way at the back, and it will cover uh, basically after landing and securing the aircraft. All right? So these are the uh, 26 or so pages that you need. And the idea behind this is you're going to print this out, staple it together, and this is going to be your study guide. And as I go over the information, I want you to write the answers to the questions literally off to the side of each of the each of the. Uh, subjects that we're going to discuss. I'm going to give you the answers that they're expecting you to give them. Okay, so we'll go through each of those. We'll write all of this down. You can actually use the back side of the sheet to, to take notes as well. And um, if you do that, you've got everything you need to get by your oral right here. All right, on one source that you can, and we'll reference different sources as we go along. But uh, this is what you want to do. Print it out and use this as uh, your study guide. Yeah. Okay, first question to come up with has, uh, has to do with certificates and documents. And it says, to determine that the applicant exhibits knowledge of the elements related to certificates and documents by, number one, explaining private pilot certificate privileges, limitations, and recent flight experience. Well, the one thing that you can't do with a private pilot uh, license is get paid, all right? So there is no flight for hire allowed, all right? No flight for hire. And for the, uh, as far as limitations on the certificate, if you have a private pilot helicopter rating, you're allowed to fly essentially any helicopter up to 12,500 pounds. Anything more than 12,500 pounds requires a type rating, right? Even the Huey, the Huey only weighs 9,500 total max gross weight. So uh, if you have a private pilot certificate, can you go fly a Huey without any type of type certificate? Absolutely. All right. So any helicopter basically up to 12,500 pounds. All right. There's no limitations on night flight like it would be if you were a sport pilot. You can't 
fly at night, you can't go above 10,000 feet. There's no altitude restrictions per se. Uh, and there's no, uh, and no restriction on night flight. There's no restriction really on the number of passengers, that sort of thing. The biggest thing is you just can't fly for hire, right? Commercial pilot, you can fly for hire. And we're gonna talk more specifically about some of the ins and outs on that on uh, when we get to talking about uh, what you're gonna do when you do your commercial. So that usually generates a question concerning cost sharing and you're allowed to cost share uh, as a private pilot. So what is cost sharing? Cost sharing, I'll give you an example of that. Let's say that you go, you have your private pilot's license, you rent a helicopter, let's say it's a four seat helicopter. You have three friends that are gonna go along for a ride with you for an hour ride or so. And let's, to make the math easy, let's say the helicopter rents for $400 an hour. As long as you pay your fair share, your fair one-fourth of that, uh, then the other people can kick in uh, any amount they want up to a lesser amount, and that's legal. All right, so if all of them were to kick in 20 bucks a piece, that's legal, 50 bucks a piece, whatever. As long as you pay your fair share, your one-fourth of the cost for the aircraft, then that is legal, okay? It gets a little dicier if you own the aircraft, as far as, but certainly you could uh, cost share the cost of the fuel and any sort of landing fees and that sort of thing. Just a little more complicated if you own the aircraft. For the most part, most of you guys are not gonna be owning the aircraft, or you're gonna be renting the aircraft. And so if you, like I said, as long as you pay your fair share, then you're, you're good to go there. Next question has to do with recent flight experience. So <clears throat> in the helicopter within the, and what recent flight experience, also known as currency, if you are a current in the aircraft, you've done three, you have to do three takeoff and landings uh, in the helicopter, all right? And with a, with, a, and with a traffic pattern, just do three takeoff and landings with a traffic pattern and log those three takeoff and landings. Those takeoff and landings, if they weren't logged, they weren't done, okay? So you gotta log them, all right? In the three tech on to be current at night, you have to do three takeoff and landings at night in the helicopter. All right, it has to be the same category and class to be considered current. Right? So the concept of being current has to do with taking passengers. If you haven't flown, let's say you get your private pilot's license and you haven't uh, flown a helicopter in uh, 120 days, let's say for instance, is it legal for you to go out, get in the aircraft, fire it up, and go around the pattern by yourself? Um, absolutely. All right. You don't have to be quote unquote current uh, to go by yourself. When you take a passenger, you have to meet the currency requirement. And that again is three takeoff and landings um, within the preceding 90 days uh, for you to be able to take a passenger. All right. And again, those takeoff and landings need to be logged. Okay. Okay, for those of you that love to cite FARs, uh, the FAR that uh, concerns pilot privileges and limitations, uh, private pilot limitations and privileges, is 61.113. In fact, the name of that is uh, Private Pilot Privileges and Limitations uh, slash Pilot in Command. And it wouldn't hurt to read that one time. Uh, it, I'll just tell you that it contains a lot of information that in a practical sense will probably never apply to you. It does have the part in there about cost sharing, only it calls it the pro rata share. You, instead of calling it your fair share of cost, everybody understands what that means. They call it your pro rata share of expenses for your flight or whatever. So, anyway, it wouldn't hurt to read through that. Um, there are very rare instances where you can be, uh, where you can receive compensation for flying as a private pilot. And, in, and again, in a practical sense, likely not going to happen. All right. So, give you one example of that: if you're flying for a charitable event uh, or a, a community event. Uh, you can actually uh, receive compensation for doing that. Uh, but you have to do it in compliance with FAR 91.146, which is literally a choke a horse list of things that you have to comply with. You have to have 500 hours of flight time. You have to do it, a, uh, you have to notify the FAA in writing a week in advance. Uh, you have to list who's in charge of the event. And you have to, um, you're limited to four events per year, no more than three consecutive days at a time. It's just, again, in a practical sense, that's likely not going to happen, all right? Uh, the question always comes up about uh, if you're flying, if the flying is incidental to your job, can you receive compensation for that? Well, that's a very dicey subject, uh, and most people uh, have significantly different interpretations of the words incidental to 
your uh, employment. So I would just say it's a very, uh, the, sort of the acid test of that is if you're in an airplane and somebody's paying you for being there and you have a private pilot's license, the FAA is likely going to have a problem with that. So, but read 61.113, it is the uh, rule specifically that governs all of this. Uh, but uh, once again, you'll see that it, most of this is not going to apply to you in a practical sense.